OK, so. What we are looking at here is uh, Gilbert Ryle. He is against dualism and he believes that dualism makes a category mistake. And you might have heard the phrase ghost in the machine. Um, and it's a really derogatory phrase that Gilbert came up with to disagree with dualism that essentially we dualism and Descartes and um, sorry Descartes view of dualism reduces us to being simply a ghost in a machine which for, for him isn't acceptable. This is a, a quote from Ryan. My destructive purpose is to show that a family of radical category mistakes is the source of the double life theory. The double life theory is that there is a separate mind and, and body. The representation of a person as a ghost mysteriously ensconced in a machine derives from this argument, the machine being the body. So he, he essentially starts his whole his, his whole premise to destroy this this main argument Descartes main argument that uh, substance dualism is true so uh, and the reason why uh, he believes Descartes is wrong is because Descartes has made a category mistake in describing what the mental states are and now Ryle tries to explain this um, by using the analogy um, of cricket. So he talks about how a foreigner um, comes to this country and you're there watching a game of cricket with them and you're telling them how, who's batting, who's bowling, wicket keeping and going through all the different skills that are needed, how some people are actually specialised in one part of the whole thing uh, rather than um, being able to do everything. And then the person talks about, well, who is responsible for the team spirit? And the point is that the team spirit is not another cricketing task, is it? Executed by one of the players. It refers to the players playing well together. It's talking about how the team performs. So the foreigner's mistake is to misunderstand how the term team spirit functions. It's not about a specific operation accomplished in the game. It involves a category mistake because the foreigner has muddled one logical category, specific cricketing tasks, with another, the way the tasks are performed. OK, so one category is specific cricketing tasks. The other category is how those tasks are performed. And so there is a category mistake here. So Raul points out that playing well is not doing two things but doing one in a certain way. He goes on to say, certainly exhibiting team spirit is not the same thing as bowling or catching, but nor is it a third thing, such that we can say that the bowler first bowls and then exhibits team spirit. It's not a different thing. OK, so it's about the way tasks are performed, not the actual task itself. And so therefore, Gilbert makes the point that the mind is not a thing. And as soon as you take away this whole idea that the mind is not a thing, then you don't need to try and prove um, that the mind exists separately from the body because it isn't a thing. Gilbert is saying, now that's a category mistake. So if it's a category mistake and the mind is not a thing, then what is it? Now, the issue of how we can be sure others have minds only makes sense if you have a Cartesian view dual life theory. So for Chalmers and property dualism, that's why we end up with this whole thing, conceivability, you can conceive of philosophical zombies. Uh, because you can conceive of two separate things. Um, and that's where we end up going down the old rabbit hole of trying to prove that other people have minds. The problem of other people having minds is what looked in, in, in the last, last lesson. So the mind is not a thing. So therefore, what is it? So um, Gilbert Ryle, he, uh, he, he talks about that actually when we ascribe mental states to other people, what we're not doing is making a reference to private mental events hidden from view. 
within an arena called the mind. What we're actually doing is we're talking about the way the person behaves. So if you have a bad back, if you are in pain and, the, and you have a bad back, that is what we are observing. And so it is really saying somebody is in pain is a shorthand for saying that they are exhibiting these types of behavior. So that means there is no gap between the behavioral evidence, what we see, and the existence of pain. Where if we actually bring Cartesian dualism in, in that there is a separate mind from the body, we then have a problem of, of the, well, we have lots of problems really, in terms of well, how does that mind interact with the body? We cannot actually see that mind because it's private. We cannot, um, is it possible to conceive of a body without a mind? And Chalmers says, yes, we can. But Gilbert is saying, well, actually, no. When we're actually saying that somebody is in pain, we, it's just shorthand for saying that they're exhibiting these particular types of behavior. So, and that's because the mind isn't the thing. Okay, if we go back to to the cricketing analogy, it's simply the way the brain performs tasks. Okay, um, in, in behaving that way. So, is there a problem with this though? Um, it seems obvious that I have a, a private mental state through introspection. Therefore, other people must have private mental states. And I'm sure you've been in a situation where you've, you've thought something, you've done something, and people come along and say, this is why you said what you said, this is why you did what you did, and you're sitting there thinking, no, it isn't. I did that for a totally different reason. And the person who is trying to explain to you why you did what you did has got it totally wrong, but they won't believe you. They All they have done is observed your behaviour and come to a, a false conclusion of why you carried out that behaviour. And so there is a problem with Gilbert Ryle's uh, view on this. It, it seems to be counterintuitive. People don't actually know what I'm thinking. People don't know. They can make good guesses, but very often we are wrong. Um, and it is incredibly frustrating when you've got somebody in front of you who is convinced that they know what you're thinking and why you did something, and you cannot convince them of anything else, that actually you behaved in that way for totally different reasons. So there is a problem with that. But Ra's response was actually, if we end up going down this route of dualism, then we are just going to be ending up with this philosophical problem that we can never know that the people we're talking to actually have a mind, actually have a consciousness. And so therefore, we'll be in a continual state of uncertainty about the existence of other minds, which when you put it as bluntly as that, seems to be absolutely ridiculous. It would plague our everyday lives. And the only time this actually becomes a problem is when you actually start doing philosophy uh, about other, other, people's, uh, other people's minds. So, Ryle is really diagnosing Descartes' error. And he does this in his book called The Concept of the Mind. Descartes' problem begins with his recognition that complex intelligent behaviour of human beings seems inexplicable in mechanical terms. So for Descartes, you could reproduce a human being mechanically all the way down to the brain, and the neuro, although we didn't know anything about neurons then, all the way down to the makeup of the brain and absolutely all of that, but it still wouldn't um, be sufficient for there to be a mind and Descartes used the example of language as evidence of the existence of other minds. Precisely because of thought, it was impossible for a purely physical mechanism to replicate language, to replicate such behaviour. But if human mentality is not something that could be replicated by a machine, then how are we to explain it? His solution, Descartes' solution, is to suppose there is a special non-physical, non-mechanical thing hidden within the body which produces this behaviour. And that's what leads him down to this whole process that we have a separate substance, a different substance called the mind, which is non-physical, doesn't follow mechanical laws, it's a very special kind of thing. 
It has no spatial dimensions, if you remember when we looked at it. it doesn't, it's not subject to the same physical laws. But what Ms. Ryle is saying is that Descartes making a mistake here because he's holding on to the idea that the mind is a kind of thing. But, says Ryle, the mind is not a weird type of substance. It is not a substance at all. Rather, it's just a way of talking about capacities of the mind, of the brain, in performing a whole range of actions. Um, so when we talk of other minds, um, we're actually referring to those acts that we can see and observable and the things that people say. So it's shorthand. So when we're saying that someone's angry, it's because we can actually hear it in their voice, we can hear it in their body. So when I say someone's angry, you understand what I mean and other people will understand what we mean as well when we're saying somebody's angry. We don't need to be able to see some invisible substance. So for Ryle, the, the important thing about Ryle is that Descartes made a categories mistake. The mind is not a separate substance. It's not another thing. It is the performance, it's the action of the brain that we have. And when we say somebody is in pain, it is simply shorthand for describing someone's behaviour. Now, just very quickly, uh, I just need to mention these uh, three people, Heidegger, uh, being with others, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre on other minds and self-consciousness, and Reed, Thomas Reed on other minds. Um, these three people all saying very similar things. Actually, you know, in terms of the mind, it's the social aspect of what it means to have a mind. So for Heidegger, it was about being with other people, that um, Descartes' mistake, when he thinks he could be conscious of himself through the Kajito argument, a self completely isolated from others is an illusion in itself, because our primary mode of experience is what he calls being with others. We are social beings and uh, we get our identity, we get our, our distinct individuality only from being with other people. So he got, he, his argument is about being with others. And uh, Jean-Paul Zarte, who was uh, taught, mentored by Heidegger, basically said the same thing in that we only really become self-conscious when we become the object of another consciousness. So self-consciousness actually presupposes awareness of other minds rather than the other way around. So our self-consciousness means that we are aware that there is another conscious observing us. So if we were, he would argue that if we imagine that like Robinson Crusoe, born and I never met another human being, we wouldn't be self-conscious. It would only be when we come into uh, contact with another mind that we would actually become self-conscious. And then Thomas Reed is essentially saying the same thing. The starting point for human reality is um, being drawn into relationships with people who care for us. Um, we don't learn the connection between facial expressions and others' emotions, for example. Rather, this recognition is instinctive, a consequence of the constitution of a nature. So when you smile at the baby and the baby smiles back, it's just, it's intuitive. Um, it's not a learned thing. So, that is Gilbert Ryle, Ghost in the Machine, category mistake. The mind is not a different substance. It's more of uh, it's more shorthand in enabling us to be able to describe behavior. And then you've got these three the people who are saying that actually our social aspect of our existence is what it means to have a mind.